Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this video is about CVR and FDR power sources. So we're going to be looking at the Jeju 737-800 accident, which is the reason for me producing this, uh, this short video. Electrical power to the recorders, rips, locations, circuit breakers and a quick summary. As always, please treat your company's training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. So, starting with the Jeju accident. Um, one of the many mysteries about this at the moment, um, until the, the final report is published, uh, is that the South Korean Ministry of Transport has come out and stated that both the FDR and CVR ceased recording about four minutes prior to the impact. From the timeline, we know this is around about the time of the initial bird strike. Now, the only things that I can think of which could have caused this um, are the following. First, the loss of both engine generators and the APU uh, not running. Second, any damage to the aircraft in the vicinity of the recorders, both of which are located in the tail. Um, and finally, uh, the crew intentionally pulling all of the necessary circuit breakers in the four minutes before the accident, which um, I hope we can all agree is, uh, is, is an extremely unlikely event, given what else was going on in the flight deck at the time. So let's start and, and look at electrical power to the recorders, um, because there, there, there seems to be a bit of... Um, uh, a gap in folks' knowledge or, or misinformation about these. So, starting with, with what we know, the FDRs start re recording as soon as the first engine, uh, it, the N2, gets above 50%, and they will continue to record for as long as AC power is available. If electrical power is lost or a failure of the, the FDR occurs, the off-light will illuminate. Uh, the test normal switch, if you put that to the test position, that will power the FDR, uh, assuming it's unpowered, and the off light will uh, extinguish. Note that there is no off switch. Even though there's an off light, there's no off switch. So the FDR can't be switched off from a switch in the flight deck. Looking at the power flow for the, uh, for the, the flight data recorder, um, it comes from uh, transfer bus one, what one of the, the 115 volts AC uh, sub buses off the, off the transfer bus. They are normally supplied by the generator, or, the, or this is normally supplied by the generator on engine number one. Now, if engine number one or its generator were to fail, it, the the AC transfer bus one can be supplied by engine number two or the APU through the tie bus. Now, this is the important bit, which I, I think were, was not widely known, is that there is no standby power backup for the, for the flight data recorder. Because it's not located on a standby bus, it's, it's on one of the, the sub buses off the, off the, the transfer bus. So I, I guess the logic was your standby power comes from the other available AC power sources, namely the, the other engine and the APU generator. As regards the CVR, that is also powered from first engine start um, until five minutes or 10 minutes have you if you've got rips, which I'll come on to after the last engine is shut down. Some aircraft may be fitted with uh, with a CVR auto on switch. Again, this is similar to, to uh, the, the the FDR, but but slightly different. Um, now, what this does is enables crew to crew to manually switch on the CVR before engine start. That allows the cockpit preparation and briefing to be recorded. It's a solenoid held switch, and it'll uh, it'll move back to the auto position during the first engine start. Again, there is no off switch for the voice recorder. So the voice recorder can't be switched off by, by any regular switch in the flight deck. Power flow for the, the CVR is from uh, 115 volt AC transfer bus two. Um, that's normally supplied by the generator on engine number two. 
again similar to the FDR case if engine number two or its generator fails it can be supplied by engine number one or the APU through the the tie bus and again there is no standby power backup for the CVR because it's not powered from a standby bus it's powered from an AC transfer bus rips i've already mentioned it uh it's quite new it's uh recorder independent power supply um kind of does what it says on the on the tin um this was brought in only oh, five ten years ago um so later ngs and maxes uh the, the the cvr is not powered by 115 volt ac it's powered by 28 volt dc from uh, one of the dc buses um, and can be isolated by these uh, these circuit breakers you, you, you see indicated on the right here. Now, RIPS is not standard, uh, even on the Max. It's a customer selectable option, albeit at no charge. Um, and you, you may wonder why some operators would choose not to uh, take the option. And I guess it's for fleet commonality. Um, but there you go, it's it's not standard. Uh, RIPS is recommended or required uh, by the following references, ICAO, FAA, EASA, um, and a couple of other um, aviation authorities as well. So it's coming, and I've no doubt um, it, it will be mandatory equipment at some point in the future, but at the moment it, it is not. Uh, how it works is, is well, you can see on the right there, you, you've got um, a power supply and a battery pack. That, that's what it's made of. Now, when the RIP senses that the, the aircraft 28 volt DC bus 2 has dropped below a 20 volt threshold, so that's 8 volts below uh, where it should be operating, then the auxiliary battery pack will, will kick in to supply the necessary backup power to the voice recorder. And that battery is, is rated to keep the, the CVR working for a minimum of 10 minutes. That might happen either due to an electrical malfunction in flight or after a normal engine shutdown after a routine flight. So th this happens on every flight we do. The, uh, the CVR will continue to run for 10 minutes after the, the last engine shutdown. Um, and it will hopefully work uh, in flight with a with a, a significant electrical mal malfunction to give 10 minutes of recording time after that event. The battery pack is lithium iron and it's kept charged from the 28 volt DC bus 2, which is I've indicated there as being the uh, the, the power supply. So that that is actually charged from the uh, the 28 volt DC bus 2. Now the Jeju aircraft, which we know to be line number 3012, that was manufactured in 2009 and was therefore probably not fitted with RIPS. It certainly won't have been fitted with RIPS from the factory because RIPS wasn't invented then. Um, whether Jeju retrofitted the, the aircraft with RIPS at the moment we don't know and that's for the investigation to, um, to discover. Power flow for the RIPS, uh, because it's from DC buses, is from the uh, the TRs, uh, as you know, is the way with the DC buses. Um, as we've said, it'll keep the uh, the CVR power for ten minutes uh, afterwards. RIPS is is actually quite similar to two other uh, standby batteries that we've already got in the aircraft. The the ISFD battery charger, um, you know, the the, the backup artificial horizon and, and, and so forth um, and the fuel shutoff valve has also got its own battery pack which which is charged from from DC bus 2 as well so um, this is not a new phenomenon to, to, to have an independent battery pack powering something that would deem to be um, important um, I guess the question is is, is why they're not coming off the off the standby uh, system, you know, wh why have they gone down a dedicated battery route? And I can only imagine it's it's for certification. Um, but who knows? It is a a an an, an adequate and, and good solution to, uh, to to a problem. But again, note that once the the ten minutes are up on the battery charger, there is no further standby power backup 
um, for rips because it's not on a DC standby bus or a battery bus. So um, 10 minutes is, is all you've got. So to summarize all of that, neither the FDR or CVR or a RIP CVR are powered by standby buses or battery buses. So that means in the event of a, of a total loss of AC power, I engine and APU generators, they will all stop working. The, uh, the FDR and CVR immediately and the RIP CVR, you, you'll get 10 minutes out of it uh, after that. And, and again, why is this? And I, I don't know. I I'm, haven't worked for Boeing. I was never in, in the design team. But my guess is that the FDR and CVR are not considered essential to get you down. Um, you know, if, if you're up there with all this kicking off, you really don't care if the FDR or CVR are working because, frankly, it isn't going to be your problem. Uh, what you need is... Um, the electrical kit working that it that that will help you get the aircraft back on the ground, um, and some examples of this are things like you know, and, and this is probably a, a pertinent example, the uh, the the relay for the hatch to manually lower the um, the, the the landing gear. That it comes from um, the battery bus. Uh, or switch top battery bus, can't remember. I think it's that the, the battery bus. Uh, so, so that is considered so essential that that you you know in the event of a total electrical failure, you will need to get the the, the gear down. We know the gear is manually extended, but there's actually on the, on from the NGs onwards, there's a, there's a relay on that hatch. Um, so that's an example of things that, that that you know is considered absolutely essential. Um, Locations, because again, it, it, the the recorders could have been damaged in whatever happened, the bird strike, as we, we think it was, uh, the initial event, you know, several minutes before the, the, the accident. The CVR, it's uh, located in a compartment in the right-hand side of the aft cargo hold. Um, no, it's not in the e and &E bay, where most of the electrical gear is, because the rear of the aircraft is considered to be a more survival location than the front of the aircraft. The FDR simile is uh, is is located in the ceiling space above the the rear galley. Um, on cargo seven three seven, it's actually on um, on the aft a frame pressure bulkhead, and that's simply due to lack of headroom for for pallet stowage. Um, but this wasn't a cargo aircraft, the JG one, so it it should be there above the galley. Uh, again, it's not in the e and &E bay because the the rear of the aircraft considered to be more survivable than the front. Um, been many different models of FDR. Uh, with the Jeju aircraft, this will be a fairly modern one that will collect. Um, we would expect it to collect 25 hours of data from hundreds of parameters. Now, as we've seen, the, the FDR and CVR are located at the back of the aircraft because it's statistically the most survivable location of the aircraft. And this is borne out by the post-impact photos of the Jeju aircraft, that um, one of which you can see on the on the right of the screen there. So the, the, the area around the, um, the FDR and CVR is relatively undamaged. However, those recorders need to be powered, and that power comes from runs starting um, at the in eBay. So if there's any damage to their cable runs, it is possible that that could cause the, uh, the recorders to stop working. Um, in almost every other accident I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with, the recorders have continued to work. And it would be some... Um, some, uh, oh, how, how would you describe it? Uh, some significant damage that, that would, you know, to the area of the e and &E bay, all the runs in between that would stop those to running. From photos we've got of the aircraft flying over, I'm thinking of the one you've probably seen of the, um, of the uh, engine stall, then there appears to be no significant external fuselage damage which would kind of rule this out but again you know i hate second guessing the the investigation let's leave it for the investigators to find out but but from a technical point of view that is what it would take to stop the the cvr or fdr the last uh way of stopping the cvr and, or, or fdr are by 
uh, using the circuit breakers. Um, now, th th we've got circuit breakers to these as we have with, with, with every other system in, in case, uh, you know, in case of a fire or misbehavior from them or in, indeed with CVR and FDRs for crew to pull them uh, after landing in the event of a, of a significant event. So that, that's why we've got this facility to, to be able to stop recorders. Um, note that it's illegal to stop recorders in flight, um, but after landing, crews are advised to, uh, to stop recorders uh, for accident investigation so that that data doesn't get overwritten. The CVR uh, circuit breakers are located there. Um, and you can see an optional red collar there to, to assist crew to, to locate it, uh, to, 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 to be able to, to pull it easily after an event. Um, the FDR circuit breakers are located there, shown. Um, so there are the, the locations of, the, of the, the, the circuit breakers. So to summarize all of this, of the three scenarios, a loss of all AC power, damage to the recorders, and circuit breakers being pulled, I think that the, the first is the most likely. But again, let me stress that the investigation has only just started, and we who are not an investigation team have got no way of knowing yet um, what, what, what went on there. Now, it is possible that an interim report may be issued. If so, th uh, that will probably be at the end of January 2025, as interim reports are normally issued about a month after the event, uh, if they're issued at all. Uh, the final report, the IKEA recommendation, is that the final report is issued a year after an event. But we, we know in certain exceptional uh, events, it may take longer. Um, so we will probably not learn anything um, on, until those dates. Again, my condolences to all those who perished on that flight, and um, I hope this information has proved useful. Thank you.